Hello, and welcome to a screencast about L'Hopital's rule. So L'Hopital's is a rule that says if f and g are differentiable functions at a certain point, let's call it x equals a, and we know that f of a and f of g are both 0, and also g prime of a cannot be 0. Then what L'Hopital's rule says is if you take the limit as x approaches a of your functions, that's the same thing as your derivatives evaluated at, that, evaluated at that point. It's also the same thing as the limit as x approaches a of your derivatives, assuming everything is continuous. Okay, so the first function we are going to look at today is x cubed minus 5x squared plus 11x minus 10 all over x squared minus 4. So I went ahead and graphed that in GeoGebra, and I include the graph here. And today we're going to take a look, look at the limit as x approaches 2. Okay, so looking at GeoGebra here, so here's x equals 2. If we were to kind of eyeball our limit, oh, I don't know, it's something less than 1. Somewhere maybe bigger than a half, but less than 1. Kind of hard to tell. Um, so now we've got to go through and check our conditions here to see if we can use L'Hopital's rule and if it does actually make sense. So if we were to plug 2 into this function, so let's look at the numerator and denominator separately. If we were to plug 2 in, we'd end up with, so this is just kind of checking some things here. Um, so let's see, we'd have 2 cubed minus 5 times 2 squared plus 11 times 2 minus 10. Because remember, to be able to use L'Hopital's rule, we need to have that f of a, which in this case is f of 2, our numerator function evaluated at 2, has to give us 0. Otherwise, we can't use this. Let's also check our denominator. So here, if we plug in a 2, so 2 squared minus 4. OK, well, certainly the denominator is 0, definitely. I'm going to put this in quotes, too only because we're hopefully going to end up with an indeterminate form, which was what L'Hopital is good for. All right, anyway, we simplify this numerator. We end up with, um, multiply all this stuff out. We get 8 minus 20 plus 22 minus 10. And sure enough, that gives us a 0 as well. OK, so this is definitely an indeterminate form, 0 over 0. Doesn't necessarily mean it's undefined. Doesn't mean it's 1. Doesn't mean it's 0. We don't know. So that's what we're going to have to use L'Hopital's then. So. And we know that they're good because differentiable, sure. The numerator's a polynomial, the denominator's a polynomial. We also know they're continuous because they're both polynomials again. So we're certainly good here. Okay, I'm going to write the little, or the abbreviation here, LH, just so we know we've used L'Hopital's. So that says then we can go ahead and evaluate these at the derivatives. So let's take the derivative of the numerator. So that's going to give us 3x squared minus 10x plus 11. And we can take the derivative of the denominator separately. That gives us a grand total of 2x. OK, so we've now used L'Hopital's in one step. Let's go ahead and see if we can now evaluate this new function at 2 and see if we get a value that makes any sense. Or we made up with 0 over 0 again, which means we'll have to use L'Hopital's again. OK, but if we go ahead and plug in our values, we end up getting, let's see, 3 times 2 squared minus 10 times 2 plus 11. This is kind of our little scratch work off to the side. <clears throat> 2 times 2. So we can definitely tell the denominator is not going to give us 0. OK, so let's go ahead and write out what that value is going to be, which is 4. And if we simplify the numerator, I believe that gives us a grand total of 3. OK, you notice my limit went away because now this is a function that is um, good at 2. It doesn't have any problems there. And sure enough, our value of something less than 1 but bigger than a half was certainly true. So my limit is 3 fourths. OK, great. Let's take a look at another function that's not a polynomial. So this one is a cosine function. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you take the limit as x approaches 0, cosine of x minus 1 all over x squared. So again, if we take a look at a graph on GeoGebra or your calculator, whatever floats your boat, this one looks like it might be approaching a half, or negative a half, sorry, because we're down here in the negative area. Um, but who knows if that's exactly it? Who knows if there's you know something funky going on here that I can't quite see with the way I've got my graph zoomed? Um, you know, you just never know. 
So again, let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening to our numerator and denominator at zero to see if we can use L'Hopital's, see if we get something that's indeterminate. So if I evaluate the numerator at zero, so cosine of zero minus one, that's going to give me one minus one, which is zero. And if I go ahead and plug a zero in the denominator, obviously zero squared is also zero. So again, I'm going to go ahead and write this in quotes as zero over zero. So this is a case we can use L'Hopital's on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to write an LH again to indicate that I've done L'Hopital's. Limit x approaches zero. And let's go ahead and do the derivative of our numerator. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. Minus one, obviously that piece goes away. Derivative of our denominator, x squared, is 2x. Okay, not too bad. So these are pretty easy when you do them separately. Okay, now let's take a look at what happens to these functions as x approaches zero. Hmm. Well, I see a zero in the denominator again. That's never a good sign. Okay, so let's go ahead and check what the numerator is, two, and let's see if we end up with zero over zero. And sure enough, sine of zero is zero. Negative in front doesn't make a darn bit of difference. So we have our zero over zero case again. So we can use L'Hopital's one more time. We may need it again, but you just never know. Limit x approaches zero. The derivative of our numerator is negative cosine. So this is where all your derivatives of all your different functions are going to come in handy. Derivative of our denominator is two. Okay, so obviously we're not going to have L'Hopital's again because our, our denominator is a constant. And if we plug zero into our numerator, we're going to get negative one. So sure enough, our limit is, as we thought when we eyeballed our graph, negative one half. But now we actually have some algebra and some calculus here that will prove the fact that our limit is negative one half instead of just eyeballing off the graph. Thank you very much.